If you're anything like me, you've probably noticed in the mirror that there's some sort of imbalances or asymmetries in our body. And this could be one shoulder or hip higher than the other. This could be a twist with the counter rotation in the body. This could even be an asymmetry in the face or a muscle on one side of the body is bigger than the other or even your strength is asymmetrical. Maybe one arm just always seems stronger than the other. That is quite normal and that is also very common and there's some biological reasons why this is happening which I want to explain today but also this other component in our body that we can actually start addressing to make some changes at least to create more symmetry within our body. So starting with biology, this isn't our fault. We are built a certain way and we have to respect that we actually aren't born to be symmetrical. Even if we took stress, trauma, injuries, let's say we are genetically perfect, we are not born symmetrical. So first of all, let's look at our organs and our diaphragm. Our organs are actually asymmetrical. Our liver is a pretty hefty organ, a pretty big organ on the right side of the body. And this is situated just under our diaphragm. And our diaphragm is actually larger on the right side than it is on the left. Then we have our stomach under our left part of our diaphragm, but our stomach also expands and gets smaller as we eat and digest. So if our diaphragm is this muscle of respiration and we already know that our organs are asymmetrical and our diaphragm is larger and heavier on our right side, that literally means we are heavier on the right side of our body. If you were to split me in half, I'm heavier on the right side. So we also have to consider when we breathe, what is actually happening to our diaphragm and our rib cage? Well, I mentioned our liver. If it's a big organ that can't really move as effectively as the stomach because it changes shape, then our right part of our diaphragm can't actually descend as effectively as the left. So if the left diaphragm can actually descend more effectively and stay in a descended state, that is more of a state of inhalation, meaning those ribs could externally rotate more easily than the right hence rib flare. Now that's just one brief example, but that is a very quick explanation. I could get into a lot more detail as to why we are biologically asymmetrical. Now with this information, if we have more weight on the right side, it's very easy to shift our weight to that side and even rotate more so in that direction. And you've probably noticed, and majority of people do, not everyone, the right shoulder tends to be a little bit lower than the left and the right hip tends to be a little bit higher than the left. And we can also look at the expression of our feet. If we are shifted to the right side, the right foot might have a bigger arch in that supinated foot position, and the left foot might actually be a little bit flatter or more pronated. And this also changes the shape of our rib cage and where compression sites are. This is so crucial to understand because if we are building on top of this asymmetrical frame, then we are building ourselves technically in more asymmetry unless we are aware of this. Now I'm not saying this to make us feel necessarily doubtful about our body and these asymmetries and am I causing more harm than good. That's not the point of this at all because I also want to share with you that there is this other part of the equation that we can address to start creating more symmetry and improve these imbalances within our body. An important question to ask is if we are biological logically just asymmetrical as I explained and we have more weight on one side, etc., then is the point to try and become perfectly symmetrical? Well, in my opinion, absolutely not because we are not perfectly symmetrical. We just need to be symmetrical enough so that we can move effectively, so that we can live a life 
being relatively pain-free, we can improve our performance, feel good, look as good as we naturally are presented so that we can start being the healthiest version of ourselves. Or else we're just chasing something that we're never gonna actually be able to catch. So let's just accept the fact that we're not gonna be perfectly symmetrical, but let's look at some solutions to bring us more into balance so that we can work in that direction to feel the best that we optimally can. Another part of this equation, of course, is going to be our fascia, our connective tissue. I talked actually a lot about this in my previous video where I was talking more about what is fascia and how does this actually cause fascial adhesions and how to release them. And that's gonna be a very good video to watch and follow that will pair well with this video. And I wanna talk more about how fascia can also cause asymmetries in the body. So I talked about this underlying biological foundation that is asymmetrical, but there's a lot that we can do with this to help bring us into balance and a massive component is fascia. I also believe that biomechanics and corrective exercise are another phenomenal way to doing this and pairing them together is a wonderful combination. Let's talk about fascia for a moment. If we are stuck in a certain way, in a certain pattern for a long period of time, or you play an asymmetrical sport, or you tend to lean more on one side, and you're not really conscious of this, then our fascia is gonna start to morph and migrate based off of how we position ourselves throughout the day. If we aren't conscious of how we are weight training, or we're just throwing weight around for the purpose of trying to gain more muscle or strength or lose weight, whatever the goal is, this can also be building these adhesions within our body and they're gonna lock and grip us in this certain alignment, which is our expression. Now there's a way to start addressing, finding these adhesions, releasing them, and then start retraining our body to understand balance. Because if I have, for example, a pec that's bigger on the left than the right, but I am doing the exact same weight in both hands with a dumbbell bench press, for example, then I need to look into two things, the biomechanics of how my joints and bones are positioned, but also are there fascial adhesions that are preventing these muscles to contract properly, preventing the fascia to move and glide the way it's supposed to. Maybe you're shoulder is more internally rotated because you don't actually have enough of genuine shoulder internal rotation. So you start building these fascial walls and then you have a lack of connection and you can't actually create these proper connections within the muscle and the fascia on that side of the body. That can be similar with a glute. Why is one glute larger on one side than the other for some people? That could be a lack of hip external rotation, hip extension, but we have to ask the question why. So the first step that I always take is let's start addressing these grips and pulls that are manipulating the way of our biomechanics. And then step two is actually starting to understand how can I position myself more effectively based off of my asymmetries so that I can start to fire up muscle fibers that have been sleeping, that have been more dormant, start activating the fascia to start working in that area that has been also asleep and just glued for a long period of time. The next big question is, what can we do about this? This seems like a pretty overwhelming approach. Well, let's just start with one piece of the puzzle. Let's just section out one part of the body, even though this is obviously a full body approach, for our brains to grasp and understand these ideas to actually make change, let's talk about the hips. So we're gonna start assessing whether you are looking in the mirror, taking a photo of yourself, and we're just gonna look to see if our hips are level on one side and what we can actually do to create a release to help drop a hip and raise the other. If you're taking a photo of your front view, which is something I recommend actually doing because then you can really see what's going on, I want you to draw a line from the top of one pelvis to the top of the other pelvis. And you might notice that it's on probably a slant in either one of these directions, but also do this with your shoulders. And then you can see that also one shoulder is probably gonna be a little bit higher or lower than the other. Now it's quite common to notice that the right hip 
will be higher and the right shoulder will be lower. Now, of course, this isn't for everyone, but it'll be interesting to see for yourself. Now, the side that is shorter or more collapsed or the hip that is higher on one side, we want to identify that because we can see that there is more compression within the rib cage. It can be in the oblique. It can be in and around this area. We want to do a fascia decompression technique to release some of these adhesions, to then use our breath and our diaphragm to start creating that space and pulling it back. And then we're gonna do an exercise to help raise the other hip and strengthen the inverse of this action. Once you have identified which side of your body is more compressed, likely for a majority of people it can be on that right side, or if whatever hip is higher, you're gonna be working on that same side, grab either a block from block therapy, or you can grab a tightly rolled up towel for this fascia decompression technique and this breathing exercise. So we're gonna lay on that side. So for me, I know I have more compression and shortening on that right side. So I'm gonna position this on my right rib cage. And you can work really this entire length, but for the purpose of this video, we'll be doing this one position. I'm gonna rest my head in my hand, get relatively comfortable. I explained a lot of this technique in that previous video I was mentioning, so I won't get into as much detail, but what we wanna start off doing initially is taking slow breaths in and out through the nose, make that exhalation longer than the inhalation. And let's just find that nice cadence with the breath. Make sure that you're initiating the breath through the belly, but then also feeling that rib cage expand as you inhale. So the belly and rib cage are doing this, then as we exhale, it's going to get smaller. Once you've settled in for about a minute or so, you're gonna probably start feeling some sensation. It might be a little uncomfortable. There might even be some pain. If it's ever too much and your breath is getting interrupted, then ease off slightly. We need to be in a relaxed state to actually release adhesions stored in the fascia. Now let's stay on the elbow like this and notice that I am intentionally closing off the opposite side of the body and opening up the right side. I want you to exhale completely, feel the left side of your rib cage, your oblique, starting to just very slightly engage and hold that in place. So then when you inhale, really use your intention and try to direct your breath into this right side of the rib cage. Now we're creating expansion from the inside out and then the towel or the block is gonna be creating that decompression from the outside in. And we're gonna do about five to 10 breaths like this. One example would be exhaling fully through the nose. Exhale all the air out nice and slow. Lock this in place, nice and slow inhale and just start feeling all of that expansion on the right side of the rib cage. Once you spent at least three minutes, even up to five minutes, nice and slow, we will exhale up and off. Next for this exercise, all you will need is a step, just something to elevate one foot. And you can also even just do this on a stair if that works for you as well. Now, I'm likely gonna be cut off here as I get into this exercise, but the intention here is to train the opposite side of that hip to work and to raise up a little bit. Now there can also be twists in the pelvis and whatnot, so there is a lot involved with a total body fix, but this will help, definitely help veer you in the right direction and start noticing some changes. So now that we released this side, so whatever side you released, we're trying to drop that hip more, which we likely just did to some extent at least, but now we want to raise the opposite hip a little bit higher, because if I am stuck in more of this alignment with a higher hip, we want to be able to push that one down and strengthen the muscles and the fascia to bring that other hip up. So I'm going to step just nice and even, feel the three points of contact with your foot, the heel, the fifth metatarsal head here, and then the ball of the big toe. And I want you just to start off by finding your balance. If you need to hold onto a wall, that's okay. But for us to hold this hip up 
already, this is creating more contraction on this side of the body to bring this up. But as I bring it up, I also want you to push through that foot to create more length on this right side or whatever side you're working. So all we're gonna do is start off by just finding that balance, hold this for five, 10 breaths or so. Then nice and slow without bending the knee, I want you to feel that your hip is dropping. So you can literally see that this hip now is getting lower and I want you to push through this foot and raise on the opposite side higher up like this. And then you're just gonna hold that for a moment and then you're gonna inhale on the way down, lowering that opposite foot, and then exhale, you're going to raise that hip up. So perform about eight to 10 repetitions, nice and slow and conscious, and do about two to three sets, and perform this for a few days and see if you start noticing a change. You might even notice a change after your first time doing this. I wanna summarize by saying this is again an example of something that you can do. When we have a full body asymmetry pattern going on, obviously that is gonna be more of a full body approach. But even doing something like this as this example can be a really big stepping stone to start bringing more symmetry in the body. And I mentioned there can be muscles that can be bigger or smaller on other sides of the body. But understanding these adhesions, when we can find and locate them, whether it's in the bicep, the pec, the glute, the foot, we can start to release it, restore the proper functioning and glide of the fascia, bring back that elastic recoil in our fascia, start connecting these muscles together as they're designed to do by using the power of fascia decompression, your breath, and understanding how to strengthen your muscles and fascia into the direction of becoming more symmetrical. I have quite a few videos on my YouTube channel that you can check out that are gonna address certain areas of the body, certain pain points that you can give a try and see if this works out for you. Anyways, if you have any comments or suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video.